the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda, also known as DPF or the fund, received notification from the Bank of Uganda about the closure of EFC Uganda Limited and revocation of its license. Section 111A and Section 111C5 of the Financial Institutions Act 2004 as amended stipulates that the Deposit Protection Fund is required to make payments or protected deposits to customers within a period of 90 days after closure of the financial institution. EFC Uganda Limited depositor analysis based on information that the fund received before the bank was closed in December 2023. Depositors to be paid using uh, mobile money, those are the depositors who have less than 100,000, constitute 68% of the total depositors in the bank. Depositors to be paid through the agent bank that will be later disclosed uh, constitute 30%, and depositors with balances above the protected limit constitute 2% of the total deposit base of EFC. The fund will commence payment of the protected deposits as follows. Depositors who have protected deposits of 100,000 will be paid using mobile money effective Monday, January 29th, 2024, after verification of their names and their mobile phone numbers. All depositors with balances up to 10 million will be paid effective February 5th, 2024 through an agent to be communicated. Requirements for lodging depositor claims. All depositors who will be paid by the agent bank are required to lodge in a claim for payment by filling out a depositor claim form that shall be made available at the agent bank at no cost. Depositors of EFC Uganda Limited in liquidation are therefore required to submit the following documents amongst others together with the claim form individual account holders, a valid original national ID, this is mandatory for Ugandan nationals, a valid passport for non-Ugandans, a valid uh, refugee number for the refugees. For joint accounts, we shall expect valid original national IDs of the joint account holders. Company and trust account holders, we expect a copy of the registration documents, a registered resolution indicating who shall be paid, valid national IDs of the beneficiaries. The fund shall continue to provide regular updates to the depositors and the public. Any inquiries on protected deposits should be directed to the DPF Director Communications on telephone number 256-312-206-400 or at info at dpf.or.ug. Signed, Julia Claire Olima Oyet, Chief Executive Officer of the Deposit Protection Fund. I'd like to report that this uh, limit was 3 million for 20 years before the Deposit Protection Fund came into existence. Immediately we came into existence, like you, we noted that this limit was low and we went through a process of conducting research and it was raised three times the 3 million shillings up to 10 million shillings. When we look at our coverage, 
With the 10 million shillings, we are covering 98% of all the depositors in the country. So according to the Deposit Protection Fund, and also following the principles, international best principles of deposit insurance, the 10 million is adequate. The small and sophisticated depositors within Uganda are fully covered. And indeed, that is reflected with the statistics that we have given. The depositors that fall below the 10 million are 98%, and we're going to pay them fully, we have the 2%. Now, deposit insurance is designed to protect the small, unsophisticated depositor. The 2% that is above that limit are what are considered knowledgeable depositors who should be monitoring the financial sector and who should be understanding the performance of their banks and making good decisions. Deposit insurance limits cannot be raised too high because then you expose the whole sector to moral hazard where the depositors will put their money in any institution without thinking about the risks they are taking. Every decision you make there's a risk. So you have to think about the risk that you're taking when you're putting your money in a particular bank. Mm -hmm. Also, on the side of the managers, if the deposit insurance limit is too high, they will take a lot of risks, knowing that even if the bank is closed, it is okay because the government of Uganda will pay the depositors. And that is why the principles of deposit insurance are very clear. You have to put a limit which covers the majority of your small unsophisticated depositors, and that is what we are done. Having said that, the principles are also clear. Every five years, you review that limit to see if it's still adequate. And so very soon, we are starting the process of uh, conducting research, uh, benchmarking with other deposit insurance entities to see if this limit needs to be raised. But I cannot say that it's going to be raised to 1 billion shillings. It will really be as long as we are able to cover the small and sophisticated depositors still. And probably the other banks that were closed, Greenland, Cooperative and ICB, you'll recall that the depositors took some time to get their money. At that time, we were operating a highly manual system. The Deposit Protection Fund has come in place. We have a very sophisticated payout system, and indeed that is why we are able to get this information from the banks, and we are going to pay depositors within a record period of not more than 10 days from when the bank was closed. Previously, we would pay, the Bank of Uganda would pay six months and above because of the circumstances that were there at that time. That is a big difference. The other big difference is that we have always told the depositors to update their records. I'm sure many of you have been here when I've emphasized depositors must update their records with their national IDs, with their phone numbers, and as I've indicated, to get paid, a depositor must present their original national ID. That is important because as a country, we are identified by our national ID us as Ugandans, and the law is very clear on that. So Ugandans who had deposits in EFC, who have not yet got national IDs, please hurry and get your national IDs. The beauties our records show most of the depositors have national IDs. We just have a few uh, depositors who didn't update. But the message to the rest of the depositors is please update uh, this information with your financial institution.